So, as a former colleague uh, on YouTube once said, in the famous words of the Avengers, Otaku Assemble! Weekly! And uh, so, you know, since my name is G-Man Live, I will say, G-Man Live Assemble! Weekly! Uh, yep. Does that work? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But either way, you know, we get a chance to break things down. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool, actually, to be able to do that because, you know, it gives us a chance to break things down in a nice little, you know, nice little safe little way. So, now, the reason for this, uh, the reason for this post is, uh, to begin, uh, Homeland, Season 5, Episode 1, entitled Separation Anxiety. And it sure is. And Homeland always delivers. Always delivers. They could use Batman, actually, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, the thing is, is that this is a great show. And they elevate their game every single season. Season 4 was probably the best season they had. And then season three was good. Season two was awesome. Season three was the end of like the Brody era. You know, just to catch you guys up a little bit. Season one, Brody kind of comes back. You know, he's all messed up and his family life goes down the tubes. But season two, you know, like Carrie and him start to get close. Season three, they get real close. They have a kid and then boom, Brody's hung. And then season four is all about Carrie and her uh, trip to Islamabad and they're trying to protect the embassy. And you start to see that there's, you know, players on both sides playing double agents and then, you know, all hell breaks loose. Saul gets captured and then Carrie has to get him back and they got to trade a bunch of bad guys for Saul. And then uh, Saul's a little messed up, you know, because he's been kind of fucked with. And, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, she doesn't think he's ready for station chief. Now, let's pick up on season five, episode one. So here we are, two years later. Life is good. Carrie Matheson is out of the CIA. She's gone. She got the little baby, the cute little, like, you know, red-headed baby, Brody. And uh, she's living in Berlin, hanging out with some German dude. And, uh, you know, life is good, man. You know, she's riding her bike, got the little kid, taking her to school. All is good. Of course, we know all is not going to be good. Um, but I have a feeling that in this season, we're going to see a more in-depth Carrie Matheson. We're going to see a conflicted, in-depth Carrie Matheson because she's going to figure out where her loyalties lie. And does it lie with, um, you know, does it lie with the CIA and the United States? Does she lie with herself? I mean, she she's going to have a lot of conflict. So this is going to be a really interesting one because I think that in this one, we're going to see a side of Carrie that uh, we haven't seen before. And so I think that in this regard, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so what happens in separation anxiety is that uh, after the, break and she's you know she's out for a couple of years uh what happens is there's a uh cia data breach in berlin now saul is in berlin with that chick allison the redhead who's like the undersecretary um and so what they're trying to do is they're trying to use the cia to spy on the german people because german law pre prevents it but they got to keep these fucking goddamn jihadis, uh, you know, from blowing up Germany. And that's the best way to do it. So they do. And, uh, you know, what happens is they get a hacker coming in, stealing all those files and then giving it to this chick who's like a like a like a freelancer. And she wants to go public with. It. Now, Carrie works as a as a uh, security um, head for this billionaire German who, 
you know, it's interesting. Like the the they really show there's some really interesting scenes that stand out in this that are really intense. The scene with Quinn when he's uh, briefing the the CIA, um, and then the scene with uh, Carrie as he's as she's talking to the to the German guy, and the German guy feels like a sense of like you know he has to like help these uh, you know he has to help these um, these like Muslims that are like you know living in this bad area in, in Syria and Beirut and there's like all kinds of like disease and starvation. Oddly enough, this is interesting because historically, I mean, it kind of does tie back to like, you know, they're feeling grief over uh, what happened in the Holocaust and the killing of six million Jews. Now, interesting enough, I did read a paper that just came out just before the Homeland came out talking about how Europe kind of died with the Holocaust. You took a culture of life and you killed it. And you and and the way you repent, you bring in this culture of death since the seventh century, and that's what is interesting because that is exactly what Quinn brings up. So when Quinn returns <clears throat> after two years of being like you know undercover, just taking people out, um, <clears throat> trying to reduce uh, killings in Germany because he's trying to kill them before they blow up, you know. Um, uh, like a community center, you know, a place like that. So Quinn is questioned by his superiors, and he says, what is our strategy? And the guy who's questioning him, one of their higher-ups, says, uh, what do you mean? He said, well, I know what their strategy is. They are all lining up in Raqqa, which is a part of Syria. He doesn't know what they're planning, but there's thousands of them. And he said, I don't know exactly what their um, planning to do there, but I know what their strategy is. Their strategy is to uh, create a worldwide caliphate. And they, it's in their book, and that's what they follow. It's to establish a worldwide caliphate and rid the world of infidels. That would be anybody that's not Muslim. And they die for this stuff. So he said, that's their strategy. And they execute it every day. And he said, it's gotta be, it's gotta be stopped. We gotta roll this shit back. I mean, this this is the kind of stuff where and by the way, I think it's interesting because they they do this in a time where like people in America right now are kind of like, you know, yeah, why the fuck are we sitting around, you know, with Obama? Uh, having no foreign policy strategy to take care of this Islamic State. And yet, the Islamic State, they know exactly what they want. They know exactly what their strategy is. And they know exactly how to carry it out. And they know exactly how to get weak-minded people to join their cause. So, that's a really powerful scene to open up Season 5, Episode 1, Separation Anxiety. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing is, is that the station chief says to him, well, what would you want, what do you want me to do? He says, put 200,000 troops down there, wipe them out. Uh, guy says, no. He said, okay, fine. Then make Raqqa a parking lot and obliterate it. <clears throat> guy says, no, too. So then he says, good. Then send me back to keep doing what I'm doing, which they do. And obviously, Peter Quinn is not happy with that. Not that he don't mind going around wiping people out, but it's just not enough. He knows the strategy is so small compared to what their strategy is. And he needs our strategy to be here and their strategy to be here. But instead, it's the opposite. Now, Carrie, on the other hand, working for this uh, German guy, she is uh, you know, talking to him and he wants to repent and help out. He feels like he's got a little karma to kind of, you know, make up for, obviously, for the killing of the six million Jews, which is implied. It doesn't really get talked about. Um, but I advise anybody actually go check out, the, I think it's in the Wall Street Journal. Great article. Um, and I think that plays off this. Like, Homeland does such a great job of that. That's why you get all these bullshit other shows, like 
Quantico and Blacklist and all that other crap. That's all crap. Homeland, where it's at. Same with uh, the actors, Kay Matheson, Peter Quinn, all those guys. They are Saul Berenson. Uh, you killed my father, prepare to die. That dude, uh, that they are good, real good. So, you know, uh, what happens is he wants to go over there and give like $10 billion so that they don't starve the people in like Lebanon and Syria. Now, she says, look, you go over there and do that, you're a sitting duck. So she tries to get in touch with Hezbollah and say, hey, look, I need safe passage with her old contacts in the CIA. So she, uh, you know, attempts to do that. She gets taken prisoner. She does make a deal with Hezbollah and she gets safe passage. Prior to that, uh, this really annoying chick uh, who's really fucking annoying, and these are the kind of people that are dangerous, actually. She has the CIA files. She wants to go public with them. Her lawyer is Carrie's new boyfriend. And she wants to go public regardless of what the consequences are. Carrie tells her, you can get people killed for this. You might not want to do this. But because she's putting herself over the interests of her country, which, by the way, is a big theme in this country. You got guys like Obama and his boys don't give a shit about the country, only care about the party. That's bad. And I think that that's what Homeland's trying to do here. They're trying to say, this is actually what you got going on right now. Because, let's face it, first four seasons, they didn't talk about anything in particular now they're actually particular talking about Hezbollah, they're talking about Islamic State, they're talking about refugees, talking about migrants. That shit's going on right now. So it's interesting that they are bringing that stuff in. They're talking about strategies. They're talking about having none. Obama, he got homeboy got no strategy. So I think that this is a they're setting this up to just be a killer, killer season. Um so what happens is Carrie gets taken hostage, told that she's given safe passage, but the guy doesn't like her too much because apparently in previous, uh, you know, little battles, he uh, she took out the dude's son. Store that in the back of your mind because it looks like homeboy wants some revenge. I don't think he's giving her safe passage just because he can. I think he's giving her safe passage because he wants to whoosh. Take her out. Because he says, I'm going to come after you. So, uh, it ends with her being dumped off uh, on the streets while the boyfriend's on the phone with the annoying chick. Uh, I don't know what her name is, but she's fucking annoying. And I hope something happens to her and she realizes, you know, there's like a good side and a bad side and you're on the bad side. So, uh, so that's that's basically, you know, season one or uh, season um Five episode one. It's a really, really good episode, and uh, kind of shows you, you know, what Homeland is doing uh, for season five. They're setting you up with this. You know, you see some moments where she's sitting in a church and kind of, you know, like contemplating and atoning. And even Saul says, like, "What are you atoning for? You know, for keeping the country safe? Nothing to be, nothing to be ashamed of." Um, so yeah, it's a great show. Um, Probably the best show of the fall. I'll be reviewing um, uh, the next one, uh, which is A Tradition of Hospitality, episode two. And um, I'll also be doing The Affair. And I got to play catch up on that. And then The Leftovers, got to play catch up on that too. So uh, in any event, anybody, questions on this? Any uh, homeland lovers out there? This is your place you want to go. I give the best ones. What the flick is, what the fuck, it sucks. It's that really annoying dude with the black hair and then the other fat dude and he sucks and then that young Turk dude and that motherfucker's biased. So all that shit, they suck. Don't watch those motherfuckers. They're not giving it to you straight, all right? They're sitting there trying to break this shit down as if it's like some philosophical, like, you know, deep shit it ain't, all right? <laughs> we can break it down, but let's let's be real. I mean, it's a TV show, so we can break it down to some cool things, but, like, these guys make it as if it's, like, some sort of, like, congressional hearing. Come on. Get real. Damn. Anyway, um, 
So look for me uh, to break it down for the next uh, episode, uh, episode two. Uh, and uh, I'll be uh, doing that as well as the affair, as well as the leftovers and my movie reviews, as well as my sports reviews. So that is the end of this review. Any questions, anything you want to know, comments below. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click down below to see more. Peace.